SNCC founding statement. Through nonviolence, courage displaces fear, love transforms hate, acceptance dissipates prejudice, hope ends despair. Peace dominates war, faith reconciles doubt. Bruce Watson, Freedom Summer. In Mississippi, 1964, Northern college students and volunteers traveled to Mississippi with the goal of getting as many black citizens registered to vote as possible in what was known as the Mississippi Freedom Summer Project. The project was inspired from the tragic recognition of the history of limited civil rights for black people in Mississippi. Once the project started, tragedy broke out as violence arose from the Ku Klux Klan and murders occurred. From this devastation led to triumph as the violence encouraged the Civil Rights Act and introduced freedom schools to the South. Another triumph from this event is that it led to the progress of the Civil Rights Movement. Freedom Summer was a necessary event that sparked the growth of the Civil Rights Act that eventually contributed to the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Freedom Summer brought the evolution of Civil Rights Movement for African Americans. Because of the Freedom Summer, there are many black voices in the government, and America is well represented by the majority of the American population. In today's society, there are many black leaders that have encouraged black citizens to take a stance and use voting power to fight for their rights. Slavery existed from 1619 to 1865. It was in these tragic years that white individuals took away rights from black citizens and denied them from their humanity by treating them as savage animals. Slavery was introduced to Americans by Europeans, after that, segregation was enforced as blacks and whites were encouraged to separate. Schools, public facilities, and even relationships between black and white people were heavily discouraged. Those who went against the norms were threatened by white supremacist groups, such as the Ku Klux Klan. The Emancipation Proclamation was an executive order issued by United States President Abraham Lincoln on January 1, 1863. Even with authority promoting equality, black society still faced segregation by state laws and threats from white supremacist groups that disenfranchised the black community in Mississippi and created a hostile relationship between blacks and whites. Slave codes and Jim Crow laws became popular in the South and were enforced in some states. With this, black people became disenfranchised again by whites and were limited to where they could learn, work, and even be allowed into. Restrictions included prohibiting them from voting, bearing arms, gathering in groups for worship, and learning to read and write. As a result from all these obstacles, voter turnout dropped drastically throughout the South. An iconic photograph of a five-year-old black boy named Anthony Quinn, was, who was attending a civil rights protest in Jackson, Mississippi, was released, where a white police officer tried to rip an American flag from his hands. Even though America was progressing, it neglected and even pushed away the rights of the black community. The idea of Freedom Summer began when Robert Moses proposed it to the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and the Council of the Federated Organization's leaders in the fall of 1963, and he was chosen to direct it in early 1964. When he first proposed the idea, many members were opposed to it because they thought it would undermine the local black leaders from Mississippi. Freedom Summer was officially approved on February 9, 1964. The racial divide and violence between whites and blacks hit an all-time high, which encouraged citizens from all over to travel to Mississippi and try to help create equality for blacks by promoting voting rights. These volunteers came in large numbers and brought with them new organizations. Before the students could even be sent down to the South, they had to be trained and taught how to deal with certain situations that they would most likely have to deal with in Mississippi. Their training sessions were at a college in Ohio. There were so many volunteers that they had to make it available for two sessions. These training sessions were necessary because most of the students were privileged whites who had never experienced so much of a racial divide since the majority of them were from the North. David Trimble was a Freedom Center participant who attended the training session in Ohio. The first freedom schools were opened on July 2nd in multiple cities in Mississippi. These schools taught blacks about their voting rights, but also helped educate them in general. By helping with their literacy, they would in turn be more likely to pass the literacy test they needed to take in order to vote. These freedom schools aimed at helping educate blacks on what voting was and the rights that they deserved. Part of their schooling was to participate in several political functions. The teachers will be free to participate in these activities with the students. The volunteers also set up community centers and set up healthcare centers for the blacks in Mississippi. 
The community centers were somewhat similar to the freedom schools because they were also centered around educating and helping with voting rights. Mississippi was 45% black, but only 5% of voting age blacks were registered to vote. Voting was extremely difficult for the black community since black citizens who wanted to vote had to pass a literacy test. In the fall of 1963, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee helped local organizers stage a mock election called the Freedom Vote. This proved how many black Mississippians actually wanted to participate in the electoral process and state government. Volunteers helped recruit and encourage black individuals to attend this mock vote. This freedom ballot was a success since citizens from all over saw this action and realized that black people were being discriminated against and decided to take action. Programs such as a COFO flyer exposed Mississippi government for not acknowledging the black community and encouraged black citizens in Mississippi to join them in a fight against the state. The industrial advancement of the TV in 1927 also helped them inform the world about civil problems because more people had access to the news. With this, a wave of support and assistance came rushing to Mississippi. Even though the Freedom Summer was intended to bring together the black and white communities, violence soon became apparent as white supremacist groups became infuriated with the movement. The day after the summer started, tragedy began as three of the volunteers became missing. The volunteers included two white males and one black male. Their names were James Chaney, Michael Schroener, and Andrew Goodman. After some investigating, their bodies were found and they were announced dead. An FBI phone call was made to President Johnson telling him that they were going to release the information to the public in 10 minutes, and President Johnson decided to call David Goodman to let him know personally that his brother was murdered. The state government of Mississippi refused to prosecute, and in 1967, the United States federal government charged 18 individuals with civil rights violations. Seven were convicted guilty and received relatively minor sentences for their actions. Other volunteers, such as David Owens, were also attacked by white supremacist groups and were severely harmed. Because cops were oftentimes racist as well, Freedom Summer volunteers and participants oftentimes didn't reserve the proper protection from the state and were easy targets. Because white southerners didn't want black people to have equality, they were willing to fight for their maintenance of their power. They did this by harassing and beating black and white participants. These acts of harm became so prominent that participants who took training courses in Ohio had to practice how to defend themselves if they were going to be attacked from an angry southerner. Participating in the Freedom Summer was dangerous but extremely important since progress was actually occurring. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 ended all segregation in public places and banned discrimination of skin color, race, religion, and gender. The act was originally suggested by President John F. Kennedy and was signed by President Lyndon B. Johnson. The act eventually led to the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Before this act was signed, discrimination was legal and used often in all types of everyday life. It was also mostly used in the South. The South also enforced strict Jim Crow laws against the blacks. These laws were discrimination, and they extended anywhere from in schools to drinking fountains. Everything was segregated. At this time, the South also condoned violence against black individuals by white supremacist groups, such as the Ku Klux Klan. By the act being signed, segregation was officially ended. Segregation against not only race, but also religion. It was banned in all areas, so schools were no longer segregated and neither were bathrooms, drinking fountains, and more. Once the murders of voting rights activists became publicized, society recognized the change needed to occur fast. Because of this, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was passed. The fact that this act was passed shows that the United States was moving towards an integrated society and saw that if they did not do this, there would never be justice for the murder victims. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 made it possible for all people to vote in the United States. The act was signed on August 6, 1965 by President Lyndon Johnson, and this act outlawed all discrimination voting practices that were used in the South. The act also outlawed literacy tests that used to be given to all black voters. 
Because of the segregation in the South before the Civil Rights Movement, many of the blacks in the South had never gotten a full education, so asking them to take a literacy test was basically just failing them before they entered the room. By outlawing these tests, it made it more fair for all blacks to have the right to vote. This was the first time in American history that the black population had a say in how the government was run. Without the Voting Rights Act being passed, there would never have been black representatives in our government, meaning that Barack Obama would never have been given the opportunity to run for president. Even long after the Freedom Summer, the effects are still impacting our lives today. The Freedom Summer paved the road for so many black leaders to emerge and make an impact on the lives of African Americans in the United States. These black leaders are not only political leaders, but they are celebrities that act as role models for the lives of many black people in America. Martin Luther King Jr. was an extremely important role model for many African Americans, but more importantly, he was a role model for Americans in general. He stood up for the rights he believed that he deserved. King also played a key role throughout the Civil Rights era. He was one of the people that led the March on Washington in D.C. King also delivered a speech on that day. He delivered the I Have a Dream speech. After he died, he left a legacy that still lives on to this day. Barack Obama is another important black leader that plays an extremely important role for African Americans. Barack Obama is a strong role model for all people in the United States because like Martin Luther King Jr., he stood up for what he believed in and is continuously working hard. Barack Obama was the first president of the United States with a skin color other than white. By being the first black president, he plays a large role as being a very important role model for minority individuals because he showed it was possible to become something if you work really hard. The Freedom Summer helped show the importance of bringing people together and making sure that everyone knows they have the rights they have. So many groups came out after it with the goal of helping specifically African Americans. The NAACP, the National Association of, for the Advancement of Colored People, was founded in 1909 in New York City, yet it still has an impact on today's society. It was said by Eugene Robinson that the NAACP was the flagship of the Civil Rights Movement. Another group that helps bring to light the need to keep the rights of blacks and whites equal is the Black Lives Matter campaign, which is a member-led organization that is working towards a world where black lives are no longer systematically targeted for demise. This campaign has an overarching goal of uniting the black community. Black Lives Matter regularly holds protests speaking out against police killings of black people and overall racial inequalities. Overall, the Freedom Summer made it possible for many black people to finally have a say in the government and the lives they lead.